My name is Natalie Shapira, and today we are going to talk about linguistic features and topic modeling for measuring psychotherapy outcome. Uh, this is a joint work with Daniel Jurafsky, uh, uh, Gal Lazaros, Eva Gilmoa Shechtman, Rivka Tuval Mashiach, Eran Bar Khalifa, and my two supervisors, Yoav Goldberg and Dana Atzil Slonim. The first part of the session, I will talk about changes in linguistic features session by session during psych psychotherapy. And later on, Daniel that sits here will continue with uh, how topic models can predict the patient's outcome. And we start with the big question. Co Freud coined the term the talking cure. We know that talking makes change, but how? Psychotherapy research aims to reveal those mechanisms of change. The traditional ways of uh, researching this question is by let the clients and therapists fill questionnaire, questionnaires before the treatment and after the treatment and compare them and check whether there are uh, correlations between the outcomes and other processes questions. And the question, can we learn more? And recent years, more and more studies are checking that uh, the therapeutic process in higher level resolution, questionnaires are uh, filled session by session. And example of such questionnaire is the ORS. Here you can see the questionnaire. It has four scales. Uh, the patients and, uh, have to uh, uh, report how he been doing with respect to his individually, interpersonally, socially, and overall, and to mark how he's been doing. And the question is again, can we learn more? And the answer is yes. What is happening inside the session? And for that we need data. Uh, Barilan University has an outpatient clinic that uh, gives psychology services to the community. The sessions are being recorded and part of the sessions going through transcription process. Overall, we have a data set of thousands of transcriptions. In this study, we use most of the, uh, the sessions. And uh, we analyze about uh, 4 million words of clients. Interesting statistics are, for example, that in average session there are 6,000 words. Most of the time the client is talking. And now that we have data, let's use it. So our first research question was, can we predict the questionnaire? Can we quantify mental health states from text? And when we went to the literature, we found out that most of the, uh, there are uh, three linguistic features that uh, appears more in a, across many studies. And those features are the word I, the self-reference, and emotion words, positive and negative emotions. So our research hypothesis was that those three linguistic features will correlate with the questionnaire from pre-treatment to post-treatment and with the questionnaire session by session. And now we will go through the methodology and challenges. So how do we quantify self-focus? And how do we quantify positive or negative emotions? The traditional ways for quantify those, to measure those linguistic features are by using lexicons. The famous and uh, common in use lexicon is look, and it has uh, lexicons for I words and positive emotion words and negative emotion words and by simply count the number of appearances in each uh, in the sentence of each lex of words in each lexicon 
we can count the we can calculate the frequency of the of the uh, lexicon's topics while we were trying to apply these methods in our data we had a problem because our data is in hebrew and there is no look version in hebrew so we tried to translate the, the lexicons but we still had problems because language behave different and morphology makes things harder. And to give you a sense, uh, we give here some examples. Uh, for example, the word deer, when we try, we, which is a positive, emo, positive emotion word, when we try to translate to Hebrew, the meaning is yakar, but yakar has also a meaning of expensive, which is not a positive emotion word. Another example is the verb inflections and clitics and morphemes. And the last example, while in English, when we want to quantify the, the uh, self-reference in text, we can just count a small set of words, I, me, mine, myself. Uh, while in Hebrew, we, we can't because the I words are, uh, the, the self-reference are sometimes hidden within the uh, morphology. So we couldn't use a small set of lexicon. And how do we deal with the challenge? So for the, the first person singular, we use yap, which is a linguistic parser in Hebrew. And to calculate the positive emotion and negative emotion words, we created lexicons. We follow look methodology with three judges, uh, psychology students, that, uh, to create the, the lexicons. After that, we go through a reconciliation process. After the reconciliation process, we got agreement of almost perfect agreement. Uh, here you can see the, the two lexicons before and after the uh, reconciliation process. As you can see, after the reconciliation, we added some words with low affect. And now recall the research hypothesis. We wanted to find, we, we wanted to examine whether the three linguistic features are correlate with the questionnaire from pretreatment to post-treatment and the questionnaire uh, session by session. So we do so by uh, using a Pearson correlation. For the first hypothesis, we use a Pearson correlation and for the second hypothesis, we couldn't use a simple correlation because the, some of the samples are dependent. And for that, we use multi-level models. This method is less known within the computer science, commu computer science commu community. Uh, if someone wants to talk about it, we can take it offline. And as uh, we hypothesized, the result was aligned with our research assumption. And the conclusion for this part is that there are implicit measures founded in the therapeutic text, and those measures are sensitive to minor fluctuations in the mental well-being of the clients. So, uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Zhurovsky and uh, I'm going to present you our uh, second uh, work about uh, how topic models can predict the patient's outcome. Uh, so, as Natalie presented, our uh, main goal when we are uh, dealing with uh, psychotherapy data is to extract uh, information about the process uh, beyond the raw transcri uh, transcription uh, data that we have or the raw uh, label data that we have. So in this work, uh, what uh, we're going to do is to extract the topics from the given uh, transcriptions. Then we're going to check if those uh, extract extracted uh, topics can uh, predict the functioning score of the patients. 
And uh, finally, we're gonna demonstrate uh, if those uh, topics, their uh, behavior over a good and poor uh, therapy case. So a quick uh, recall uh, about our uh, data set. Uh, each session is composed from a transcription that uh, based on the patient and the therapist uh, talk turns. And uh, in addition, each uh, session uh, has an uh, ORS score, which is a number between uh, 0 and uh, 40. And we have uh, 873 sessions like that. So as we said, our first uh, goal is to extract uh, the topics, the semantic topics from our uh, transcriptions. A uh, semantic topic will be such a, it will be a cluster of uh, semantic similar words. And uh, we're gonna to, we, we want to organize, to explore, to summarize our uh, data set without, uh, of course, uh, reading all of it or uh, viewing all of it in some uh, automatic way. And we're gonna use the LDA model uh, for that. Uh, so LDA model uh, is a generative uh, statistical uh, model that uh, it's a very basic assumption that uh, a document is composed out of, out of a small uh, number of uh, topics where uh, every topic is a distribution of, uh, of a distribution all of, of, over the vocabulary, and each word uh, in the document is uh, based is based uh, one of uh, those uh, topics. Uh, the LDA model supplies uh, three outputs. So the first output, as we said, uh, will be the list of the topics. The second output is a kind of a linkage of uh, every word in the document to the topic that uh, the word was uh, sampled of. And the third output will be some uh, distribution vector uh, of topics that the document was uh, composed of. And the input. Uh, the input, uh, as we said, is of course the documents, but uh, what is the definition of the document in our uh, scenario? So as we said, we have uh, more than uh, 800 uh, transcriptions and uh, every transcription is a uh, more than one hour uh, session uh, of talk between the patient and the therapist that uh, cannot be defined as a document because the, the assumption that we just said that the document is uh, defined from a small number of topics. So uh, what we did is to, we used only the patient terms and defined that uh, each term will be a document. And uh, in addition, we use some uh, common uh, approaches of uh, words filtering, like uh, filtering uh, common words, real words, and uh, non-informative words. And uh, as a result, we got uh, 28K documents. Uh, that's, uh, the second parameter that we need to define is the K, is the number of topics. So we test our uh, preset for uh, K between 50 and uh, 300, and we find that uh, our preset uh, did the best with the uh, number of topics of uh, 200. So we change our model, and the result we get list of uh, 200 topics. We can see here a sample of uh, 10 topics, and uh, the top uh, 10 words for uh, each topic. As Natalie said, our uh, core data in uh, Hebrew, so we can see the top Hebrew the top 10 Hebrew words in the top 10 uh, English uh, translation. So, for example, we see topic number uh, 37 is uh, contain, contain wor contains wor words uh, like love, fun, real, hug, and so on. Some uh, topic about feelings. Uh, topic number uh, 187 contains words like uh, family, mother, aunt, children, sister, brother, and so on. Some family topic. Topic number 30 uh, has words like uh, money, pain, voice, months, bank, and so on, some economic topic. And uh, at this very point, we can uh, see that the topics that we get are, uh, are ha having some uh, semantic, uh, semantic uh, cl cl clustering or uh, re reasonable, or, uh, and we, in this very point, without any extra data or extra labels, we can uh, ask and explore some interesting questions about our uh, data set. For example, we can ask uh, which sessions uh, contain topic uh, 187 that uh, talk about work. We can ask uh, are there any sessions that contain uh, work topics and happiness topics. Uh, we can ask if our data set is more about work or studies and so on and all that without any label uh, data. But in our case, we do have uh, label data. We have the ORS uh, label. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to find out uh, which topics uh, correlates with the therapy outcome. So what we're gonna do, we'll take the topic distribution of every session, we'll uh, imp import it in a, in a prediction model, and we're gonna see if the session is, uh, is a sh the session uh, have a positive or negative outcome. 
So as we said, the LDA model uh, supply the vector distribution for every input document uh, that we have. But as we're interested in the session outcome and not the document outcome, we did some uh, simple linear uh, uh, interpolation and, and now we have the uh, topic distribution uh, for every session. And uh, this will be our uh, X input for the model. Uh, the label, uh, the label uh, input will be a binarical uh, input that uh, the class O will be the negative, uh, negative label and the class one will be the positive uh, label where every score below 24 will be defined as a negative label, a score uh, above 24 will be defined as a positive label, when uh, the score of 24 is uh, defined to be the clinical uh, cutoff. And uh, as a result, we have uh, 400 uh, class O samples and uh, 449 class one samples. So uh, we have uh, this uh, data set of uh, 849 samples where the X is a uh, uh, vector uh, of a uh, 200 size of properties that are sum to one, and the Y is the binarical uh, label of uh, O and one. Uh, we're gonna use the SMLR model, which is the sparse multinomial logistic regression, which uh, does good with uh, small data, with uh, very small data, and with a large number of uh, features. It, it uh, does a uh, field selection, uh, omits the non-informative features, and uh, rank highly the most informative uh, features. So we train the model and uh, that uh, are the results that we get. So we see that the majority base uh, accuracy is uh, about uh, 52% and our test uh, accuracy is about 75%. Uh, on the one hand, the, our test accuracy is not so good, but we can see that our model uh, learns some uh, patterns and they reach uh, extra 22% of accuracy and we are interested to explore the templates, that uh, the patterns that the model uh, did learn. So as we said, part of the SMLR model, what it does, it uh, ranks the features, the most informative uh, features that uh, in that case uh, helped him to get to reach the O class and the one class. And we're gonna, we're gonna uh, look only on the top four features. And uh, in fact, we are looking on the top four topic numbers. Uh, and we'll remind the top 10 words of uh, every topic and we can see that the most predictive uh, topic words for uh, predicting the O class, the negative outcome class, are uh, words like uh, people, uh, fight, crazy, loneliness, and so on. The next topic is some uh, negative feelings topic, then physical difficulties, anger, uh, and so on. On the other hand, the most uh, predictive topics for predict the positive outcome are uh, topics that uh, talk about celebration, leisure experience, enjoyment, positiveness, and uh, so on. Uh, so, we, in this point, we want to demonstrate how our uh, topics that we just uh, extracted, the positive topics and the negative topics, are, uh, behave on a good treatment uh, case and a poor, and a poor uh, treatment case. When we we accept that uh, in a good treatment case, the signal of the positive topics will increase and the signal of the negative uh, topics will decrease and the uh, opposite on the poor treatment. So we sample the two treatments from our uh, treatments uh, data set where uh, one treatment is defined to be a good one and the other is defined to be a poor. And we can see that in the good treatment case, the signal of the positive uh, topics uh, indeed, uh, decreasing on the on the time on the sessions, while the negative uh, signal topics is uh, decre decreasing. Uh, while on the pool treatment, the positive uh, the positive topics uh, signal decreasing and uh, in some point they uh, disappear, and the negative signal is uh, increasing. Uh, that uh, tool visualization can be uh, useful for the therapist if we want to check his uh, patient uh, progress. For example, if uh, the therapist sees that in session number 11, uh, all the patient talks about is uh, negative topics and uh, non-positive topics at all, so he might uh, think to himself maybe he does something wrong. Uh, so to sum up, we introduced a way to, to extract uh, non-trivial uh, information based on uh, quite uh, raw transcription data or uh, label data. And we did it with uh, using uh, appropriate models uh, that are uh, interpretable and uh, supplies wide output based on the quite non-complex uh, input. Thank you. <laughs>